Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you, all of you, and may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of peace, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Spirit that comforts, the Spirit of eternal life, the Spirit that makes living water spring up from within those who have Him. May this Spirit take possession of your being, especially your being, especially your mind, your intellect, your rational being, your intelligence, so that your intelligence and your spirit may conduct your heart rigorously according to God's heart. May the Holy Spirit, because only He can do that, the Spirit of God directs our spirit so that our spirit may conduct and guide our heart. That's how it works. How wonderful. How wonderful. You can notice that God doesn't take away our freedom to choose, to opt. He respects our tastes, He respects our will, He respects it very much. However, when someone desires to do His will, then He in a glorious way, fills that person with His Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit may guide the spirit of that person and the spirit of that person will then guide their heart in the way of righteousness and truth in life. And that's what I wish for you, dear friend. I wish this on everyone. I desire this for the Jews as well as to the Arabs. I wish this on Greeks and Romans. I wish this to my friends as well as to my adversaries those who, who consider us as adversaries. I want this for you. That's why we use here these means of communication to speak to everyone, but to speak about what? What I think, what I want, what I wish. No. I want to speak of what is written. I just want to repeat and blow the trumpet to shout out loud to the four corners what God speaks in His Word. And the voice of God, as the Psalm 29 says, is powerful. The voice of God is powerful to separate even the flames of fire and let alone those who love Him, those who want to do His holy will. So Jesus, when He was together with His disciples, they asked Him, Lord, when will these things be that will be no stone left upon another? So Jesus patiently taught them and that's why his preaching is very strong because he speaks to the disciples. The disciples are those who have ears to hear and practice this teaching, the teaching of his master. That's all. This is a disciple. So if you are a disciple, of our Lord Jesus Christ, then you are hearing what is written in your Bible. Read your Bible. 
what's the Bible that you use? Is it a Catholic Bible? Then use your Catholic Bible. Use, is it an evangelical Bible? Then use it. Read it. Is it Baptist or Methodist? Read the Bible. Pay attention. Yesterday, we were speaking about the seriousness of the last days, the difficulties, the problems, the terror, the tribulations, the great tribulation of the last days. And you are going to hear something strong now. Jesus said, in order to give an idea of the greatness of these tribulations, he said, but woe, but woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For example, you've been watching on the news, for example, the people that in Palestine having to leave their land, running away from the bombs, and all those problems there. So, the women who are pregnant there in Palestine, imagine their situation. Those who are seven, eight months pregnant, about to give birth, how are they going to run away? And the same thing with those who are nursing babies, babies that were born in, in these days due to the, the scare, the problem, the child was born, then how are they going to take care of these babies, these newborn babies amidst a war? And it's going to be a whole lot worse in the final days. I mean, the great tribulation is going to be much worse than what we are talking about here. So Jesus continued saying, and pray that your flight may not happen, may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. Because in the winter you can imagine how are you going to be able to carry a, a comforter and, and stuff for you to take shelter in. How can you get a, a jacket, you get a scarf and, and so on. You carry whatever you can, but is it enough to face the winter? to face the winter, for example, of below 60, below 70 degrees. It's not enough. So you see how strong this is. Nor on the Sabbath, right? Those who keep the Sabbath. How are they going to run away on the Sabbath? They can't even walk more than 100 meters on the Sabbath, which is what the law of Moses says. So Jesus keeps on on, on emphasizing his message up about the end of time. And then he says, because there will be, pay attention, dear friend, for them there will be great tribulation. When Jesus says great, he means it. When he says assuredly, it's an absolute assurance. Assuredly, I say to you, he speaks this way. He is emphasizing, he is strengthening that idea, because he says there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, no ever shall be since the beginning of the world until this time. But wait a moment, wait. There in, in the beginning, in the times of Noah, there was a flood, there was a great death all over the world. I know, but everyone died at the time. When the flood came, everyone died. They were not suffering, they were not groaning, they were not here to see what was happening. No, they just died. Death came and took them all quickly. But here, there will be such a great, such a great affliction that people are not going to die straight away. They will suffer the consequences of the great tribulation. Do you understand my point? I, I think this way. I am here trying, trying to help you think how 
this will happen, what's written here, for you to get the spirit of the Word of God. That's what we are trying to give you. It's probable that I am not being fully understood in the way I speak because I am not such a great preacher. No, I just preach the Word of God. The way that the Holy Spirit gives me, I pass on to people. So Jesus said, for then there will be great tribulation, meaning there will be a great tribulation because death is not going to come instantly and kill everybody like in the flood. No. It will come in the form of affliction, great tribulation, as has never been been since the beginning of the world, since the times of Adam and Eve, since the beginning of the world, until this time, Jesus said, no, no ever shall be. Meaning that this great tribulation, which is a period of great affliction, has never happened before. No ever will be similar to this when this comes. And he comes to the point of saying, and unless those days were shortened, and they were made short, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened which means the following, I think this way, I believe this way, I see this way, I interpret it this way. Jesus will come and rapture the church. This is it. Then the world will enter into a chaos, the chaos of the great tribulation under the reigning, the direction of the Antichrist, under the reigning of the Antichrist. Then the great tribulation will come. The reign of the Antichrist is the, the reign of Satan, the one that is against Jesus. Jesus came to bring salvation. Satan will come to reign, to bring suffering, pain, and to impose on people all the suffering that he has in himself because of his loss of his rights and privileges that he had there in heaven. He's envious of humanity. The devil is envious of you. Even if you are poor, poor, very poor, the devil is envious of you because you know that there is hope for you. He knows that the Lord Jesus is about to save you. You just have to cry out to him with all of your heart. But for him, Satan, there is no hope anymore. And he knows that. And he's not going to gain anything with your suffering. He's not going to gain anything with your soul. Nothing at all. He will only have your soul if, if you're not saved. He will only have your soul. He will see your soul suffering in hell alongside with him. But he won't be able to do anything. Nothing. You suffer as well. He won't even be able to enjoy your suffering because his suffering will be infinitely worse than yours. So pay attention. Due to the elect ones, remember that many are called, but few are chosen. So for the sake of the elect ones, the elect ones, the chosen ones that will live after the great tribulation, after the rapture, because the rapture will come so the world will fall into a total spiritual coldness. The Holy Spirit will be removed. The Holy Spirit won't be on earth anymore. So people won't have faith. It's, it's what I think. People will not have faith because faith comes from the Holy Spirit. And if He is not here, who will give them faith? However, there will be people with the knowledge of the Word, many of them. The chosen ones will have the knowledge of the word and the understanding of salvation and they will seek such salvation. So they will be saved. Very few, but there will be people saved. So because of them, these days of great tribulation 
will be shortened. The reigning of the Antichrist will be of seven years, divided in two parts. In three and a half years, he will pretend to be a good man. He will pretend the way he does, deceitful, leading people to the illusion of a religion, of an emotion, of the heart, of the feeling. He will work with these weapons and he will gather those who are those who don't know the truth or those who don't accept the truth. So for three years and a half, he will seem to be a good man, the, the one that will bring a supposed peace on earth. But the last three years and a half, that's when things will get worse. So the other half of the seven years, Wow, Jesus is talking about this last half. And if those days were not shortened, at least for the elect ones, at least for them, those days will be shortened. You, dear friend, pay close attention to what we are reading here in the Holy Scriptures. You can check this there in Matthew 24. There in Mark as well, you can read this in Mark 13. And also see what John, the Apostle John said concerning this situation. Look at this, pay attention to what the Apostle John says, giving, let's say, emphasizing what's going to happen in these days of great tribulation. He said, Little children, it is the last hour. Little children, it is the last hour. Bear in mind that John wrote this 2,000 years ago. And in those days, he was already saying, It's the last hour. It's the last hour. The last hour has been to many people. Millions of people die every day. It's been the last hour. So he says, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, pay attention, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, you are hearing this, we are talking about this, the Bible speaks about that. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now, so in that time, in those days of John, even now, many antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. Meaning in those times, there were already antichrists, which are those false, those people who grow these are the, the chaff amongst the wheat. And they pretend to be the wheat until the moment of the harvest. Because in the moment of the harvest, those who are chaff, they will be separated and they will be thrown into the fire. But those who are wheat will be guarded to God's barn. How wonderful. Praise God. We are reaching this last hour. Jesus said, and unless those days were shortened, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Praise God. My dear friend, pay attention. It's not a matter of religion, of church or denomination. We are talking about here of souls, the salvation of souls and of your soul. Because the devil walks around roaring like a lion to devour our souls. And if we are not attentive, if we are not watching 
we may end up losing even what we already have achieved. So take care of your soul. The Apostle Paul, he gives words that makes us understand that we were saved, we are saved, and we shall be saved if we remain steadfast until the end. Jesus also said that in his letters to the church in Revelation, he said, he who overcomes, an overcomer is the one who fights and overcomes. They overcome themselves, they overcome their will and do the will of God. They overcome their heart and do the will of God's heart. May God bless you all. At 9.30, Esther and I will be back on TV Temple speaking about all the subjects concerning the salvation of the soul. May God bless you and until then, in the name of Jesus. Praise God.